What is going on guys and welcome to another episode of the crack a pack series. I hope you were doing super super well today. I am very very excited. Of course it is Friday. Always love a good Friday, but today we are opening up a very special pack of Onslaught, uh, which does open up the opportunity for original fetches, which is not something we get our hands on very often. So hopefully uh, we get a chance to see one of those opened on camera. We have opened a few packs of Onslaught through the, well, years now that we've been doing this. Uh, and so hopefully we get something. I don't think we've gotten anything up until now uh, that has been super substantial, but we will see as we go through. Of course, we'll do this as if we're drafting the set, so hopefully we'll be able to figure out what our pack one pick one would be if we were drafting. I did not draft during this time. I did collect a little bit, but uh, I don't necessarily know what the best cards are, so feel free in the comment section. If I get something wrong, please tell me. I'm happy to have that conversation as we go through. So Mage's Guile is our first card here. It's an instant for one and a blue. Uh, target creature can't be the target of spells or abilities this turn, and then you can cycle it for one blue. So if you pay a blue, discard it, you can also draw a card. Uh, I like cards like this with cycling in particular, just because it means uh, basically you always have an out for making this a draw spell. So it's always going to be relevant. It's always going to be good, even if the card itself, uh, the effect of the actual standard card doesn't actually have an, a, a relevance to the game at that point. This is much of a much more of a save card. It's target creature can't be the target of a spell or ability. So basically, you play this in response to a kill spell or something like that. You save your creature and that's fine. But generally speaking, uh, I don't find this card to be very good. There are constructed decks that run this uh, with like a Nivix Cyclops style thing. Uh, in that case, it's very good. But in general, in draft, I don't think that it is. Uh, taunting Elf is a 0-1 for 1 green. All creatures able to block Taunting Elf do so. Kind of self-explanatory card. Uh, I don't know that I like this. It basically just guarantees you're going to be able to get a good attack in uh, unless they use a kill spell on this. I find that as a one drop, it's probably a little above average just because uh, it does kind of require a kill spell. Uh, in that instance, I think it's okay, but a lot of times I feel like it's just going to be a chump blocker for something else. Uh, I don't think it's going to be relevant until the late game, and people will know it's coming because it doesn't have haste or anything like that, so you do have to wait a turn. I I probably would, I definitely wouldn't first pick this. I don't know if this is super playable in general, uh, but definitely not a first pick. Uh, Crown of Suspicion is an enchant creature for one and a black. The enchanted creature gets plus two, minus one. Uh, and then you can sacrifice the crown and the enchanted creature and other creatures that share a creature type with it get plus two plus or minus one excuse me until the end of the turn this is an interesting one uh i'm not a fan of enchant creatures this one's a little better because it does give you its own out uh being able to sacrifice it and buff up everything else that is the same creature type is pretty good uh and creature types are very relevant in this set tribal stuff was very important here in that instance, I feel like it's okay, but in general, not a super exciting card, and again, definitely not a first pick. <clears throat> uh, Glory Seeker is a 2-2 vanilla creature for one and a white. I remember one of the first decks I ever played was just a soldier deck, uh, and it ran this. So, very interesting card. It is just a bear, but uh, it's fine. It's just a 2-2 two -two for two. Creatures in general during this time were a little underpowered for the most part. That's not to say all of them were... Uh, and so a 2-2 two, two for 2 honestly is okay. It's not great though, it's not a first pick by any means, but if you're in a soldier deck, go for it. Uh, it's filler at best. It's it's curve consideration, and in that instance it is good for that. Uh, Nosy Goblin is a 2-1 two, for 2 and a red. Sacrifice it, tap it and sacrifice it, excuse me, to destroy target face down creature. Uh, if you don't know, Morph was also a big part of this set. Destroying a face down creature is actually pretty relevant. Uh, and so in a goblin deck, this is pretty good. This is not a reason to be in the goblin deck, though. That's a bit of a corner case. I mean, you're going to see morph cards if you're drafting this set. I think that's just normal. However, uh, you want to have something really, really big uh, in the goblins deck to make it worthwhile. And in this case, this just isn't it. It's a th it's a 2-1 for 3 most of the time with occasional upside if you're against a morph deck. So not super exciting in my opinion. Uh, Choking Tethers is an instant for three and a blue. Tap up to four target creatures. You can cycle this for one and a blue, uh, and then when you do cycle it, you can tap one target creature. Uh, I actually really like this card, so this is a much more of a tempo play. 
Uh, it definitely is going to be able to get you in at the right time for damage or something along those lines. So I like it for that reason. I also like that it does have that cycling ability. So basically it's a little bit more flexible than just your normal tempo swing. Uh, you can either tap down a creature and draw a card for only two mana, which is pretty good. Or you can for four mana tap up to four creatures, which just means against regardless of the strategy you're up against you're going to be able to tap down all the creatures that you need to to get in damage or do whatever you need to at that point uh so for that reason i actually like this so far this is, seems like the pick uh but it's still honestly not great uh so we'll see what we get wirewood pride an instant for one green target creature gets plus x plus x until the end of the turn where x is the number of elves in play obviously elves being the uh the green tribe which we've already seen taunting elf as well uh, excuse me. Uh, the Wirewood Pride is actually pretty good in the Elves deck. Uh, it just gives you a way to deal hopefully a lot of damage or at least get a good combat trick in uh, for that deck. Obviously, if you're not in Elves, this is absolutely useless, though. Uh, do not pick this early. Definitely pick this if you're in the Elves deck, though. Uh, Siphon Mind is a sorcery for three and a black. Uh, each other player discards a card from his or her hand. You would draw a card for each card discarded this way. This is much more at its home in like commander or some multiplayer strategy. Uh, this is not necessarily very good in a 1v1 game. Uh, and so for that reason, I don't like this at all. Uh, it's four mana, discard your opponent, a random card from your opponent's hand. And by random, I mean they choose it, so you think it's ran you feel like it's random, it's not really helping you that much. And then you draw a card, so it's like, eh, that's not very good for four mana, so not super exciting there. Uh, Demystify is an instant for one white, destroy target enchantment. This is a very straightforward card, and absolutely a sideboard card. There is not enough reasons, in my opinion, to play a destroy enchantment effect in onslaught i know there are a number of enchant creatures and things like that that you may think are like man i have to have this card but i believe that they are not the most impactful cards and so for that reason i would much rather sideboard a card like this uh but if you're in white definitely pick it up uh screeching buzzard is a 2-2 with flying for three and a black uh, and when it's put into the graveyard from play each opponent discards a card from his or her hand actually kind of like this card uh it's probably gonna die fairly quickly it is a 2-2 for four but it does have flying so in certain cases you're gonna be able to deal some damage at least for a turn or two before this dies so i like it for that reason uh and then it does have the the random upside of discarding a card from your opponent's hand when it dies i like that a lot uh so i don't know if it's better than choking tethers but i'll keep them both here for now uh, secluded step is a land when it comes into play it comes into play tapped uh, and it taps for white and then you can cycle it for one white this is a, a cycle of lands through uh, this set where they only produce one color of mana but you can cycle them uh, they also come into play tapped these are actually pretty good being able to cycle these away is very very useful especially in draft uh, we all know the feeling when you get flooded it's terrible but being able to cycle this away and have another shot at a better card is fantastic early game you just throw this out when you don't need to to use that mana and it works out very very well so i like this card a lot uh definitely would pick this but again i'd rather be in white or have a reason to be in white before picking these up uh, our first uncommon here is lightning rift it's an enchantment for one and a red whenever a player cycles a card you may pay one of any color and if you do it deals two damage to target creature or player this is an interesting one it's a little bit more of a play around or build around card uh, for limited and I try and stay away from those a little bit depending on how easy it is to manage uh, I think in red cycling is a little bit more difficult to come by I might be wrong on that uh, There are definitely a lot of cycling cards that we've seen, but I don't believe anything has been in red uh, And so for that reason I would shy away from a card like this You have to make your deck the cycling deck uh, and then be able to pay that extra mana to keep it going uh, and keep damaging uh, either creatures or the opponent and so it's good, but there is uh, there's that build around dynamic that I don't really love. Uh, and so th this may be incorrect. This may be a really good card, but I would I would shy away from it. Uh, Starlit Sanctum is a land. Uh, you can tap it and add one generic mana to your mana pool. You can pay a white and tap it, sacrifice a cleric, and you gain life equal to the cleric's toughness. Or you can pay a black and tap it, sacrifice a cleric, and target player loses life equal to that cleric's toughness. 
Obviously, this is meant to be in the cleric stack. Uh, if you're not in the cleric stack, this does very little for you. Um, but if you're in the, the white black cleric stack, this is kind of a useful ish tool. I would definitely run it, uh, just to have the ability to nuke the opponent for a few damage if need be, uh, or gain a few life if need be, though I feel like definitely nuking the opponent is going to be the thing that you want to do most of the time. Uh, and so I like this for that deck. Obviously, you need to be in that deck first, though, otherwise, there's no reason to even pick this up. <coughs> uh, Bone Knitter. Uh, is a 1-1 one, one cleric for 1 and a black. You can pay 1 and a black and regenerate target zombie. Uh, and then you can morph this for 2 and a black. So you can play it face down as a 2-2 two, two, for 3 of any color. And then turn it face up at any time for the morph cost of 2 and a black. Uh, in case you don't know how morph works, that's, that's basically it. Uh, this works in the zombie and the cleric deck, which I like. But it's really not all that good in my opinion. Um, it's nice to be able to regenerate target zombies. Uh, it just means that you're able to, to leave up more creatures and make sure that the removal on the opponent side of the field is a little bit less viable than it could be. But other than that, I don't think that this is the best card in the world. I like the Screeching Buzzard and the Choking Tethers honestly better. Uh, that might be incorrect, but not super excited on Bone Knitter. And then our rare here is not a fetch land. It is Misform Sky Reaver. It's a 6-6 six, six for 5 and 2 blue. It has flying, and then you can pay 1 and it becomes the... Uh, it becomes the creature type of your choice until the end of the turn. Honestly, this is just an easy uh, rare pick. Uh, it's just the strongest card in the back. For seven mana, you get a 6-6 six, six flyer, and that seems better than anything else that we have had so far. Unfortunately, this has not been the best pack, uh, but you get to see some of the mechanics, and it's always fun opening up these old packs. So if you disagree with this pick, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Cracker Pack episode.